of events, the Men's World Cup, including some of the top athletes from around the world. Many making the trip to Cornerbrook in preparation for the upcoming World Championships in Lausanne, Switzerland, where they'll face a similar tough course to today's tough setting. Canadian fans will be watching Simon Whitfield, while other competitors may have their eyes on young Spaniard Javier Gomez, who's had a brilliant start to his season already this year. Oh, for, for me, this uh, is just a preparation race for the World Championships, but uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to try to do my best. And uh, I know there is a uh, very, very hard uh, uh, other competitors, you know, Simon Whitfield, uh, Ivan Rana, Hunter Kemper, it's a, a very high level, but I'm going to try to be with, uh, with that guys, and I'm gonna, if, if I can, I will try to win them. <laughs> Hunter Kemper continues to lead the men's rankings, but his first World Cup victory of the season has so far eluded him. He hopes to change that here. The, the swim really sets up my race, and I'd rather have a swim like Edmonton than I did as opposed to Mazatlan, where I'm kind of behind in the third bike pack. So I definitely want to set up my race towards I'm in that lead group, and hopefully there's not some guys away, and, and Andy and a couple of guys aren't away. But uh, if I can be in that small group away, it would be great. If not, then uh, we'll just go from there, and I'll just keep on trying to work my way up. After a convincing Kiwi victory at the last event in Edmonton by teammate Hamish Carter, Chris Gemmel is hoping to make it two events in a row for New Zealand. I'm trying to use this as, as a stepping stone for how I'm going to hit my speed work heading into the Worlds and, and for Beijing. So I've got some certain plans in the race that I want to really try and push the bike and if it means that people are just going to sit on me then that's, that's fine. I figure the run's hard enough that it doesn't matter whether you're in the front or whether you're sitting on, you're still going to hurt. So. You know, it'd be nice to get away in a small group, but if we don't get away in a small group, I'll still be applying some pressure on the bike. And these are the men to watch today. Gomez and teammate Rania could pack a one-two punch, especially on the bike and run, while Canadian fans will, of course, be pulling for Simon Whitfield. Now, once again, here's Barry Shep. For the largest group of men we have ever had racing Cornerbrook, and this is going to be absolutely havoc through this early stages. 70 plus men in a very small windmill in pond, and already you can see one of the men with their goggles knocked up. Absolutely critical to get to that first of the swim boys down at the 150 meter mark. The athletes can go on either side of the yellow swim boy, you can just see on the bottom of the screen, but it's the one at the end of the windmill in pond that they are all going towards. Off the blue pontoon at the top of the screen, and as we take a look, that is Javier Gomez, who is just a brilliant swimmer. You add that to a 30 minute 10 kilometer runner, and really a tough man to beat as he goes into the next stage of his career. And the pot sitting in a very solid second place right now as we anticipate the tough American athlete to start to push the pace. Hunter Kemper back in about ninth or tenth. Whitfield sitting in fourth, and Chris Kimmel sitting in fifth. Coming towards the apex of that first corner and some very fast swimming, clean water for the leaders, but it'll be absolute madness as you get back in about 15th to 18th spot as all of the men now very tightly bunched together, trying to come around that corner and very aggressive swimming. Just days ago, it was 23 degree water temperature and we anticipated that it would be a no wetsuit swim. A couple of cool nights and the rain here today bringing it back underneath the legal limit and all the men wearing wetsuits here today are just at the 19 and a half degree water temperature. They have swam here in 12 degrees water over the years, so a very balmy carnival course for the athletes here today. A small little breakaway now going off the front. I believe that's Andy Potts along with Javier Gomez and Courtney Atkinson. We've seen Courtney Atkinson do this so many times in the past, and right now a small group of three trying to make a small but significant break right here in front of them. Well, after a 2004 world title in the 2300 championships, Javier Gomez missed most of 2005 with illness, but he's back with a vengeance, and right now Courtney Atkinson, along with Javier Gomez and Andy Potts, you can see that gap right now, it's only about 8 to 10 meters, but we've watched those kinds of gaps become significant as Potts now starting to turn up the water and trying to make a breakaway. The World Cup winner in the 2005 race in Edmonton, that was his first and only victory on the circuit. This year he's had a third in Ishigaki and a second in Mazatlan. Most impressive out of those races, however, is the fact that he was able to get those medals by having some of the fastest runs of the day. They're coming to the completion here of this 
Treelock 1500 meter swim, and it'll be the swim cream going to Andy Potts of the U.S. as he'll be coming out of the water right now, just over 17 minutes of change. That'll be Gomez onto his feet, Courtney Atkinson as well, and they really just have a very small gap now to the likes of Avon Rania, who'll be coming out of the water, Grandma Brady from New Zealand, Chris Gillow just coming out of there. Simon Whitfield and Hunter Kemper have had great swims, so they are where they want to be, Colin Jenkins from Canada, and Axel Zebra could be coming out of the water right there as well. And that's a great shot, just how tough it is coming out of the water here in Cornerbrook. You've got to run on that blue carpet for about one minute, almost all vertical into the transition zone. Your heart is in your throat. And then it's onto the bike and start a hilly 6 lap 40 kilometer bike ride. They're coming out of the water right now at the completion of their 1500 meter swim and a gutsy run up and out of the transition zone. First in will be Andy Potts, Javi Gomez just to his back at the top of the screen. You can still see athletes coming out of the water at the bottom. That means they're down by somewhere in the neighborhood of 65 to 70 seconds. That's the time it takes on the bottom of the stairs to your bicycle. And Gomez to the left. Andy Potts just out of the wetsuit. And you can see it is still raining here in Cornerbrook, so the men are going to have to watch it when they go out onto that course. Gomez first out onto the bike. It'll be Andy Potts and Courtney Atkinson just seconds behind him. Yvonne Rania has had a great run up. The 2002 World Champion right now sitting in full spot. Simon Whitfield just going out into that group as well. So the Canadian Olympic Champion sitting in a very solid position. It is Andy Potts and Javier Gomez both trying to get it into their shoes and they'll be climbing a very steep hill here in front of them. Schumacher right there just going out and Big Matt Reed. So together, those two U.S. athletes not swimming the way they would have liked here today. I know that Matt Reed has been ill over the last few weeks. It's Potts and Gomez going around the top of the hill at the college, and they'll be going right back down, speeds of about 70 plus kilometers an hour. No surprises after the men's swim with Andy Potts out in the lead, but his advantage was not significant with Gomez, Atkinson and Rania all in contention, along with Chris Gemmel from New Zealand. Just 17 seconds back, Hunter Kemper and Simon Whitfield were setting things up for a heated competition ahead. Down the hill right now, the main chase group, and they will be trying to go after these two athletes. Andy Potts will use his extra mass going down the hill, a little bit bigger man than Javier Gomez. He has used his mass to its full capacity because as we start lap number three, it will be Andy Potts putting some sizable time, about 30 plus seconds, maybe more, back to the main chase group. So, Javier Gomez and Courtney Atkinson back into this main group, which includes the likes of Simon Whitfield, Colin Jenkins, into that group as well. Axel Zebra will be into that group of Von Rania, Colin Jenkins. Be a support person for sure, and that's Chris Gimmel, I think, sitting into that group as they go through. Our second of our chase groups down by about another 30 plus seconds, and they will work very hard because if they're able to catch on to that main chase group, and there's Peter Crows as well, they'll have a significant opportunity to move up in the overall rankings. Kyle Jones from Canada just coming into view there, one of the top men in the 2300 last year's World Championships. But Andy Potts right now is going solo, and we have seen men do this in the past. The Big Foot Waltz in three consecutive times winning on the World Cup race here. But Andy Potts will have to find another gear because he is now starting to get back time to this main chase group. The 2006 BG World Cup Thunderbird Triathlon. Alberta it's been 25 through, consecutive Jordan years Pride of racing here. Through. And as we take a look right now, through. Andy Potts will try to do a good well. Waltz, and then that is go off the front and lead on the boat. The farthest end of the course now, the only flat section of this course, and Potts will look over his shoulder and realize that he's only up by about 10 seconds. But as he goes into the wind, it'll be a tough decision, but I think Andy Potts will be wise to sit up and to get into this main chase group and just get himself a little bit of nutrition, save his legs for what will likely be a very tough run course. Axel Zebrick in the yellow just coming into the screen right there. He has been a talented cyclist over the years from Belgium. We have seen him make a number of breakaways. And right now, Axel Zebra trying to see if he is able to manufacture a small breakaway on this course. 
And the only flat section of this 2006 corner book course, and as the bank come back towards the corner, they'll be less than 10 minutes to finish. Chase group of athletes who certainly have done nothing to help themselves will be coming in 
With an over two minute gap, Chris Gimmel now onto the downhill section of this very top 10 kilometer long course. Coming off the bike, it'll be a combination of Simon Whitfield, Rito Hugh, Van Rania, Javier Gomez, Hunter Kemper, some of the brilliant runners in the sport, and they are going to have to make up some massive time. Just coming into the screen right there, that's a Van Rania. Javier Gomez as well, and he pots off the bike. Simon Whitfield now just getting ready to head out. Courtney Atkinson in the right half. Whitfield, a brilliant run. Ryan on his backside, very good plan. Hunter Kemper, Rita Powell's heading out. Kyle Jones from Canada as well. And they are all now chasing down this man who's going to have to run scared because he knows the sport's greatest runners are coming up from behind. So it was two Belgians and a Kiwi leading after the 40-kilometer bike stage with Chris Gemmel leading our breakaway group of three out onto the run with over a two-minute lead. But some of the strongest runners in the field were still in the chase, including Simon Whitfield, just a few seconds back. And this will be the first time that Chris Gemmel will clearly know where he is at on the course, the out and back section of this run course. And Gimmel will realize that he has some unbelievable runners coming up from behind. Just around, that is Gomez, Whitfield, Andy Potts, Havan Rania as well. And Gimmel has given up 20 seconds through the first 1.25 kilometers, so he is going to have to allot out that time gap very, very well if he doesn't want to lose this race. Kyle Jones and Courtney Atkinson and Doug Freeman coming up from behind. Jones, one of the best young runners in the sport. That's actually Hunter Kemper going through there. So Hunter Kemper is really suffering here today, the man who's born number one for so long. Zebrick, right now, just about to be passed here. So it will be Javier Gomez and Simon Whitfield and Andy Potts, only two men ahead of them right now. That'll be Peter Crows and Chris Gimmel. So right now, they're fighting out for third, fourth, and fifth, and they're all chasing down the man in blue from New Zealand, Chris Gimmel. Gimmel telling me that he put in some of his biggest run miles of his entire life over the last six weeks. Hasn't done a lot of speed work, but he's done a lot of volume. And right now, Peter Crows, one of the talented young athletes from Belgium, being passed by Javier Gomez and Whitfield. And he has nothing to feel bad about because those two men may be two of the greatest runners the sport has ever seen. It's Gimmel from New Zealand, who has given up now over 40 seconds, so he is going to have to be very careful as he looks over his shoulder and sees Whitfield and Javier Gomez coming up from behind. And just look at the brilliant running form as Gomez to the right of the screen in the blue and yellow, Whitfield in the blue just behind. Coming to at the five kilometer mark, he has given up at least half of that gap, just over a minute and three seconds. We understand that Chris Gimmel has given up, and Simon Whitfield and Javier Gomez are having absolutely brilliant runs. The 30 year old Canadian, the Olympic Games gold medalist with one of the greatest runs ever. He did it again at the Commonwealth Games in Manchester in 2002. Virtually every one of his eight World Cup victories have come from those brilliant runs. And he is making up time right now on Chris Gimmel and Gimmel running scared, realizing that Whitfield right now is having a brilliant day as well. It is Chris Gimmel trying to hang on. Javier Gomez, the man that won the World Cup in Madrid earlier this year, along with the Van Rania, his teammate in second. And winning at home is oh so sweet, and Simon Whitfield would like to taste it as he has won here in 2002. Gimmel putting a little bit of fluid over his head, but really perfect conditions as a little bit of rain coming back out again as the men are going through the seven kilometer mark. And Whitfield on the right side of the screen now from Canada. To the left, that is Javier Gomez, and the two of them trying to run down Chris Gimmel. comes back from the far end of the course for the final time. He will go by Whitfield and Javier Gomez. The Canadian and Spanish athlete realizing that they might be running out of time, but they are certainly outrunning Chris Gimmel here on this 10-kilometer course. Gimmel from New Zealand could become the third of the New Zealand athletes to win here. Hamish Carter and Nathan Richmond been victorious in the past, and Whitfield now making that patented move with about 700 meters to go as they go up one of the final hills here in Quarterbrook, Newfoundland. The 30-year-old Canadian pulling away from the 23-year-old Spanish athlete. And as they make that final stages towards the finishing line, Chris Gimmel 
will continue to dig in deep up on top of the toes after having put in so many miles over the last few months on his bike and run. Getting ready for the World Championships in Lausanne, Switzerland. Chris Gimmel now on to the gravel section. You can see the great long strides of Whitfield as he starts to come down the hill. He'll be making the hard right-hand turn onto the gravel in just a few seconds himself. It's Chris Gimmel now looking over his shoulder. I think he's got to start to realize that he has a victory in hand with less than 300 meters to the finishing line. Whitfield has been able to take almost two minutes off. An incredible gap of time on this 10 kilometer course. But Chris Gimmel will have timed it to absolute perfection. A solid swim, a tremendous breaker on the bike with Peter Crows and Axel Zebra, and just enough on the run to be able to hold off the fast moving Canadian. Whitfield pulling ahead of Javier Gomez, the man who's had some of the fastest runs in the sport this year. But the outstanding support of the spectators here over so many years, and they've come out this year once again, even though it was raining through most of the day. And Chris Gimmel will be the benefactor of crossing on here for the last time of the 2006 Look at that. A little bit of long distance phone call, and maybe back to New Zealand. It's coach John Holmans, I'm not sure, but Chris Gimmel will claim victory here in Cornwall for the last time on the Leap Man side. Whitfield, a fan favorite, will take the second place finish as he has in the past. And here comes Javier Gomez to claim a third place finish on this tough Cornerbrook course. A uh, very respectful hug for Javier Gomez, Chris Gimmel, and Simon Whitfield. And it'll be Andy Cox, the great American, making his way across the line. He was first on the water, did so much of the work on the bike, and showed once again that he is one of the strongest runs in the sport and has to be respected. Fifth and coming in across the line will be the 2002 world champion, Ron Rania. So we will have two Spanish athletes, one American, one Canadian, but it'll be one Kiwi on top of the podium. So taking a risk on the bike proves fruitful today for New Zealand's Chris Gemmel, who built up a two-minute lead in the closing stages of that bike race and then held off a hard-charging Simon Whitfield to make it two victories in a row for the Kiwi team after Hamish Carter's win at the last event in Edmonton. You know, the Kiwi boys have done well here in the past and it really suits us and I just waited for the right move to go away. A few moves went away early but didn't really think they were the kind of people I wanted to hook up with. And, but as soon as I saw Axel and, uh, and Peter go, I, I've, I've ridden with them before in, in little races in Europe and, you know, they, when they want to get away, they want to get away and they push and those Belgian boys know how to ride. So, uh, so that was just a perfect move. And Simon Whitfield marks his return to the podium after a long absence with a brilliant battle on the run in front of an ecstatic Canadian crowd. A placing that will give the Sydney Olympic champ renewed confidence. I had a battle with Gomez and I had a battle with my head that started telling me maybe I can't do this anymore. And two laps in I was thinking, can you do this anymore? Are you good? Are you, can you win? Can you outrun people? And uh, I did. <laughs> to myself I can still compete with the best in the world and I feel I'm the one of the top runners in the world and I was able to prove that to myself today and that was fun. Javier Gomez also had a brilliant run battling Whitfield down to the wire perhaps foreshadowing a changing of the guard and proving the young Spaniard could be a definite contender at Worlds and on to Beijing. Uh, this is my third podium in the World Cup this year so I'm really happy I, I pushed uh, very hard on the run with Simon but in the end, he, he was faster than me, and I, and I couldn't follow him. But anyway, I'm, I'm happy, you know. I'm just 23 years old, and, uh, and this season is, is wonderful for me. So Javier Gomez continues his march to the top with another consistent performance on the World Cup stage, while Canada's Simon Whitfield made his triumphant return to the winner's circle with a silver medal today, proving he still has what it takes to compete with the best on the world stage. But at the end of the day, it was Chris Gemmel who had the best tactical race, earning himself the gold medal, his first World Cup victory since 2004. Just behind our podium placers, Andy Potts ran himself into fourth spot, proving he's not just a swimmer anymore, while Ivan Rania took fifth. Canada's Kyle Jones had the race of his life to finish seventh, while World Cup leader Hunter Kemper faltered on the run, winding up in tenth. But 10th spot was still enough to keep the American on the top of the men's rankings. Third place today moves Gomez into second overall ahead of teammate Rania, while a victory today leapfrogs Gemmel into fourth. Another consistent race for Atkinson keeps him in the top 10.
So as we say goodbye to Cornerbrook, Newfoundland for the final time, we also look forward to the next race on tour. It's the ITU World Cup from Salford, England. Be sure to join us then.